Hello everybody. Today we're gonna talk about dealing with uh, color issues when you're shooting with your strobe on location. So first let's uh, talk about, uh, explain what's the problem. So when we're working outside, we're basically working with two different light sources. The first is your, your strobe light. Then the second is uh, the ambient light. So the color temperature of your strobe light is pretty consistent. For example, this uh, Profoto B1, I googled it on the internet, it's, uh, the color temperature is around 6100 and with a 50K shift, depends on the power range, uh, which is pretty consistent. Uh, at the meantime, the color temperature of uh, the ambient lights keep changing. For example, between the sunset and sunrise, the color temperature is much cooler compared with the midday. Uh, during the golden hour, the color temperature is much warmer. Uh, so that comes the problem. Uh, when you're working with two lights with two different colors, then that's, you're gonna have some issue. So there are many ways to deal with this issue. The first one is uh, you can always fix this in post-editing. Um, then there's a second way is using gel. Um, talking about using gel, there are some drawbacks about using gel. I personally don't like using them. Um, I gotta explain why. So the first one is you had to carry uh, many different gels, like a quarter, half, full stop gel, right? So attaching the gel to the strobe light could be a pain in the ass. Like you tape it and then whatever way it is, and then if it's not the right intensity, you have to change it. Sometimes you even have to stack it up. So that will slow you down your workflow dramatically. Uh, the second one is um, the gel will cut down your light output. Uh, the, so your 500 watt strobe light probably can only shoot as bright as 250 watt if you put a, like a full stop gel on it, and that could be even less. It depends on if you're gonna end up stack the gel, right? Then the other thing is um, because the strobe, especially when it's shooting at the maximum power, it will generate a loss of heat. So that could potentially melt the gel, so that will cause you even more problems. So I personally never use gel when I'm shooting outside. It's just um, too much work and too much trouble that I had to deal with. Now let's talk about what can we do, how can we deal with this color issue without using gel or spend a lot of time on post-editing. Uh, okay, so this is uh, this is my solution. So this is a salt box. This is a two by uh, three salt box, but actually uh, any size salt box will work. Of course, the bigger the better. So uh, so let me explain why. So this is a salt box, but this is also a reflector. So reflector gonna reflect whatever the color uh, the ambient light is, right? So if you put this uh, salt box slash reflector very close to your subject, uh, let's say that your subject is you're shooting backlight, the sun is behind her, and this is pointing to subject, subject your subject, and also uh, is pointing to the sun. So it's gonna bounce whatever the color temperature the sun has. So then you fix your color issue, right? Okay, so now let's uh, go through some. Uh, sample photos and then I'm gonna draw some lighting diagrams so then you can better understand what I'm talking about. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so uh, let's start from the first sample photo. So this was shot very close to the sunset. You can see the sun is basically um, is over here. He yeah, has a very low angle over here to the model. So what I did is like, uh, is a very warm color temperature. I put a um, uh, silver umbrella, the medium sam silver umbrella over here is over around uh, nine o'clock position, and to the model. So if you look at the top, view, the sun is right here. This is the sun. Then the model is here. She's facing this way. Then my umbrella is right here. Uh, it's a little bit angled this way, so it bounces the, the sunlight back to the model. So that's the first one. So second one. This is a kind of like a late afternoon. Uh, it's kind of during the winter time. Um, the sun is roughly around this angle. Yeah, two by three salt box right here. Uh, probably seven or eight o'clock position. 
So top view will be a model right here. So saw box somewhere around here. The sun's right here. So the saw the sunlight hit the saw box, bounce back to the model, then gave the warm tone to her face and her body. And this is the same. The sun was like a, um, around one or two o'clock behind the model and uh, is a very low angle. The sun is around here. And then two by three saw box just outside of the frame, just around somewhere around here. So top view will be sent over here, model will be right here, saw box will be right here. Yeah. So use the saw box as a reflector to bounce the warm light back to the model. Then to fix the color problem. Yeah, beauty dish again, close up shot, sign behind the model, beauty dish right in front of it. Almost exactly the same set layout as this one. Yeah, these two is almost exactly the same, other than this is a close-up shot. Same thing, yeah, it just, uh, this time the sun is right here, my saw box over this side. So you might wonder, okay, how can you bounce the light with this side? So okay, uh, how are you going to bounce the light when your, your saw box kind of like come from the same direction as the sun? So this is, um, let me draw a lighting diagram. So the sun is right here, the model is here facing this way, right? So. I put my saw box a little bit in the angle, so like this way, so the sun is bouncing like this, right? Sometimes I put my saw box this way, people think I'm feathering the light. No, actually, I'm not doing that for that purpose. I'm actually uh, put my saw box in the angle, so it's better to bounce the light. If I put a saw box, if the sun has come here, model's here, and I put my saw box this way, right? So it's not going to be very efficient bouncing the light, so you have to put it over the angle. 